Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be finishing our user account page where our users can update their information. And we'll also add the ability to upload a profile picture as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's update the template for our account page. This will be the page where the user can update their, their information and also upload a picture. So I have the account template open here. And now I'm going to grab a snippet of HTML from my snippets folder because it would be a lot to watch me type all of this in. Uh, and the code for these snippets will be in the description section below if you are following along and want to grab that. So within my snippets folder here, I'm going to grab this uh, code from account.html. And now back in our project, in our account template, uh, I'm going to paste this within the content block. So I'll, I'll replace the h1 heading that we have there for now and now i will make sure that this is indented correctly and this html here is just a short little layout that has some bootstrap classes to make things look a little nicer uh, plus some styles from the main.css file that we added earlier into our uh, static folder which is referenced in our layout template so we can see that in the snippet that I pasted in here, we have an image for the user's image. And right now that's hard coded to user image.jpg. We'll change that in just a second. Uh, we also have this H2 heading here with the user's username and also this uh, paragraph tag here with the user's email. So for right now, let's change the uh, username and the email to be the current user's username and email address. And we've seen how to do this before. We can use these uh, double curly braces here. And now we can say current underscore user dot username. And now we want to also put in their email address. So we'll replace this uh, uh, filler email there with the current user dot email. Now, like I said, we also have an image here for the user's uh, profile picture. And right now, the source for this picture is just hard-coded in, uh, but we want this to be set to the user's image if they've uploaded one, and to display a default image if they haven't uploaded a picture yet. So if we remember back in our database video, we set the user's image file field to be equal to default.jpg by default. So we need to actually create this default image so that we can display that for now. And we can use any image here, but I have one that I like that I'm going to use for now. So I have a folder on my desktop here called profile underscore pics. And if I open this up, we can see that we have a default.jpg image here uh, that's kind of an anonymous user. And also, <clears throat> and I'll also put a link for this image in the description section below if you'd like to use this as well. So I'm going to go back here to my desktop and now I'm going to move this profile pics folder uh, into my project static directory so that we can use the URL for function to grab that image. So I am within my static folder here in this other finder window. You can see right now we just have this main.css, which we've added uh, earlier in the series. And now I'm just going to move that profile pics folder into that static directory. Okay, so once we've copied that over, now let's update the hard-coded uh, image source within our account template to be equal to the user's image. Uh, and again, that'll be default.jpg if they haven't uploaded an image yet. So I'm actually going to set this in our routes and pass it into our template. So first let's open up our routes.py file and let's go down to our account route here at the bottom. And now let's set the image file that we want to pass to that template. So I will say image file is equal to, and we're going to have all of these user images located in the same place. So this is going to be URL four, and we put that in the static directory. And within the static directory, we can say that the file name is equal to, and that was in a profile pics uh, directory. And now let's concatenate the uh, current user's image uh, onto the end of this file name. Now you could use an F string here as well, but I'm just going to use the plus sign for concatenation. So now I'll say current user dot image file. And if we remember image file, if I open up my models dot py um, in the user model, image file was the name of that column where we're storing that image. And like I said before, we have a default set to default dot JPEG. So back to our routes. So we now have an image file variable here that is set to the URL for 
uh, our static directory and within our static directory uh, profile pics and then the user's image file. Okay, so now let's pass that image file uh, into our account template. Um, so just like we've seen before, when we do our render template, we can just pass additional arguments into here. So I'm just going to call this the same thing as our variable. So I'll say image file is equal to image file. And now within our account template, if I open that back up, we can now use that image file as the source instead of the filler value that we currently have. So I'm going to get rid of that filler value and just put in our double curly braces here. And we want to use that image file that we passed in to this template. So now if we save all of the files that we just changed, uh, then we should have a basic account page for our user. So let's run this in our browser and see what we get. So I will pull up my terminal here and clear this out. And then I will run our application by doing python run.py. So if I run that, we can see that we don't get any errors and our web server is running. And I will pull up our application here and reload this. Okay, so now, I am already logged in here, so if uh, you're not logged in, then you'll have to log in in order to get to the account page. Now if I click on account, then we can see that we have a basic account information page here where it's showing our default image, uh, also our username and our email. Now within this page, we'll also want to be able to update our username and email address and also upload a custom profile picture as well. So we need to create uh, forms for that. So let's open up our application and open up our forms.py file. So I will open that up. So now we want a form to update our account information. And this is going to be similar to our register form because it's going to allow us to update our username and email address. So I'm just going to copy our registration form as a starting point. So I will copy those custom validations as well. So I'll copy that, come down here to the bottom and paste that in. And now I'll change this uh, name here from registration form to update account form. And we are going to leave the username and email fields as they are, but we don't need the password or confirm password fields. So we will remove those. We are going to have the ability to update our password and we'll see that later in the video, but it's not going to be through this form. It's going to be through uh, a reset link and an email. And we're also going to add a field here to update our profile picture. But for now, let's just get this working with the username and email and come back to the profile picture in just a second. Um, okay, so now instead of this submit button saying sign up, let's change this to be uh, update. So I will save that. And for our username and email validations, these are going to stay pretty similar. So for the registration form, they were just checking whether the username or email already exists and would throw a validation error if those were already taken. But we have to realize that our user could submit this form without changing either their username or email. And the way that this, and that should still be valid, but the way that this is set up right now is that it will query the database and find their current username and email in the database and see that that value is taken and will throw a validation error. So we only want to run these validation checks if the data that they submit is different than their current username or email. So let's import the current user from Flask login so that we can use that to make this check. So up here at our imports, uh, I will import Flask login. So I'll say from Flask underscore login import and we want to import that uh, current underscore user so i will copy that go back down to our update account form and now we can say that we only want to do these validation checks if the username or email that they enter is different than their current username or email address so i will come up here to the top and for this username validation i'll say if username dot data is not equal to the current user dot username, then we can run these validation checks. If it is equal to the current username, then we're just not going to validate it. So now I'll copy this conditional here and do the same thing for our email. So I'll say if email dot data is not equal to current user dot email, then indent everything underneath that. 
Okay, so now let's import this form that we've created into our routes. And then from there, we can pass it into our account template. So I'm going to open up our routes here. And at the top, we want to include this in the forms that we're importing. So right after our registration and login forms, we will also import this update account form and copy that. And then down in our account route, we can create an instance of that form. And we've seen this before with the registration and login routes. And now we can pass this form into our template. So where we are rendering the template here at the end, I will also say form is equal to form. And if we want, we can break these lines up to be you know, PEP 8 compliant. Uh, in these videos, I make the text so large that it's easy for it to run off to the right of the screen. But uh, I will uh, take that one onto the next line there so we can see all of that. Okay, so we'll add our form validation logic here in this route in just a second. But first, let's just get this displaying in our template. So like I said, this form is similar to our registration form, but with fewer fields. So I'm going to open up our register template and grab the code that we used for that so that we can reuse it. And so within the registration template, I'm just going to grab this entire div of this content section and that wraps our form. And I'm just going to copy that entire thing. So I will copy that. And then within our account template, uh, within my snippets here, I have a comment in the HTML for where to drop this form. So I'm just going to paste that in on this line right here. So go up to the top here and save that. Okay, now this is similar to our registration form, but it's not exactly the same. So we're going to keep the username and the email fields, but we want to get rid of the password and the confirm password fields. And we're just going to get rid of the entire div that surrounds those. So these divs of form groups, I'm going to delete both of those for the password and confirm password fields. So let's take those out. And lastly, I'm also going to... If I go to the top here, we can see that we have a legend. I'm going to change this legend from join today, and I'm going to change this over to, say, account info. Now, we've already gone over what these different form elements do when we created the register and login routes in the third video of this series. So I'm not going to go over those again in this video. Um, like I said, this is pretty much like our register form with some stuff taken out. Okay, so now let's see how this looks in the browser and make sure that we changed everything correctly. So I'm going to uh, save all of the files that we changed. And now let's pull this up. So it looks like we need to restart our Flask server here. So I'll do a Python run.py and now pull this up in the browser and reload our account page. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think that I like the border around this section here around our form. And that is that div of content section. So I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to go back to our account.html template. And I'm only going to use the form. And I'm going to get rid of this div of this content section. So I'm going to get rid of that. And right after we close our form, I will get rid of that closing div for that and save it. Okay, so now let me reload this in the browser and see how this looks. So I will reload this. And now we can see that that border around that section is gone. And I like that a little bit better. Now, none of this currently does anything when we submit this form, uh, but we'll get that set up right now. Uh, and another thing that jumps out to me with what we have here is that it would be nice if our form already had our username and email filled in for us when we navigated to this page. Uh, so let's go add that now. So I will pull up our project and I will go to our routes.com pi file and first we need to add our allowed messages because we're going to be posting this form back to this route and that is something that is easy to forget when you add new uh, routes with forms so i'm just going to grab that methods section from our login route and paste that down here in our account route so we're allowing get and post requests and now we want to add in a conditional for if our form is valid when submitted so we're going to say if form dot validate on submit and that's actually a method so we need to put parentheses in there 
And now if our form is valid, then we can update our current username and email. And one good thing about SQL Alchemy is that it makes this really easy. So we can simply change the values of our current user variable and then commit those. So we can come in here and just say current user dot username is equal to and it'll be equal to form.username.data, which is what they are going to uh, enter into the username field in that form. And now we can also set the email by doing the same thing. So we can say current username dot email and form dot email dot data. And now all we need to do is submit that. So we can say db dot session dot commit. So if I save this, now let's also add a flash message that tells the user that their account has been updated. So I'll say flash and we'll pass in a message here that says your account has been updated. And then also let's pass in a category, which is going to be our bootstrap class. And so we'll pass in a category of success for that. And now let's redirect them back to the account page. So I'll say return redirect, and that is going to be URL for and we want the URL for the account page and you do want to do a redirect here instead of letting it fall down to the render template line and the reason is because of something called the post get redirect pattern and you might not know what that is but most of you have probably seen it before um, so if you've ever re reloaded your browser after submitting a form and you see a weird message that comes up that says something like are you sure you want to reload data will be resubmitted or something like that um, that is because your browser is basically telling you that you're about to run a, another post request when you reload your page so us re redirecting uh, causes the browser to send a get request and then we don't get that okay so that should take care of updating our users username and email but I also said that it would be nice if our form was already populated with the current users username and email as soon as we go to the account page so to do this we can add on to our conditional and we can simply say so here we're saying if form validate on submit and then we can add to this and say L if request dot method is equal to a get request then we can populate those form fields with our current users data so i can say form dot username dot data is equal to current user dot username and now i'll also do the same for the email so i'll just copy that and paste it in there and now change both of those to be email so those changes should populate our form with the current users data um, Okay, so now that we have those changes in place, let's make sure all of that works. So first, let's pull up the site and create a second user so that we can make sure the validation that we put in place is working. So I'm going to make sure that our server is still running here. It looks like we need to restart that. So I'll do a Python run.py and go back to our website. And now let's log out and create a second user here so that we can make sure that our validation is working. So the username, I'll just type in as test user. This will be test user at demo.com. And then paste in a password of testing there and sign up. So now we have a second user in our system that is set to test user. Now I'm going to log in with the first account that I first created, and then I will try to update my account. So first I'll log in and now I'll go to my account page and we can see that the form is already populated with the current users uh, data. So we have our current username and our current email address. So now let me try to update my username and email using the values of the other account that we just created. So I will uh, try to set my username to test user and I will set the email address to test user at demo com so if we update this then we can see that both of those fields came back as being invalid saying that that username is already taken and that that email is already taken so that's good but if we instead change these to something like test user 123 and test user 123 at demo.com if I update now then we can see that the account was successfully updated and those values for our username and email are also changed here in the heading 
Now, it looks like my flashed message here, uh, I should have started that with a capital letter there, so I must have uh, missed that. Let me go and change that, which is just right here. So I'll change that back, save it, open up our website again. So now let me change these values back to what they were before. And this shouldn't be a problem because those old values will no longer exist in the database because they've been updated to these new values. So I can set these back to what they were. So Corey MS and then Corey M Schaefer at gmail.com. So we can update that. Okay, so we can see that that changes back fine. Um, okay, awesome. So we've got a pretty good account page here where users can update their information. So now let's focus on getting this set up so that we can change the profile picture. Now to do this, we're going to need to add a new field to our form that is an input type of file. So let's open up our project and go back to our forms. And at the top of this module, we're going to import a couple of things from Flask WTF. So this is going to be, um, so right under Flask WTF here, I'm going to say from Flask WTF dot file. And from there, we want to import the file field, and that needs to be uppercase there. So file field and also file allowed. So this file field is going to be the type of field that this is. And this file allowed is going to be uh, just like a validator where we can say what kind of files we want to allow uploaded. And in this case, we can restrict it to, since we're uploading images, to something like JPEG and PNG. So let's go down to the uh, update account form and see what this looks like. So right above our submit, I'm going to add in another field here and we will just call this a uh, picture and we'll set this equal to file field. And now just like our other fields, we can pass in the label for this field. So I will say the label for this is update profile picture. And now we can pass in our validators. So we'll do validators is equal to a list of validators, but this is only going to be equal to one. This will be file allowed. And now the arguments that we're going to pass in here is a list of allowed files. So for this example, we're just going to accept JPEG images and uh, PNG images. If you want to add more file extensions on there, then you can if you want. But this is just what we're going to, what we're going to do for this example. And now we have to actually make sure that this field is going to be rendered in our template. So we've updated the form and now we need to pull up our account template here to make sure that this gets added. Now at the bottom of our form here, right above our submit button, uh, I'll put this picture field and this will be a little different than our other fields. So I'm not going to copy and paste the entire div for that section, but I will grab certain parts. So I'll grab the opening div here and also the label and then I'll paste in a new a new form group here and then close out that div and then we want this to be form picture dot label and we won't give this any class that's just going to be empty there and now underneath here we will add the field itself so this will be form dot picture and we do want to give this a class so we'll say class is equal to and we'll set this equal to the bootstrap class of form control dash file and save that. Now, if we get any validation errors back, then these errors are a bit different for this file form field. Uh, so I'll just use a simple span to spit out those errors. So inside of our div here, um, I will put in a conditional with our curly braces and percent signs and say if form dot picture dot errors and loop over, the, over these just like we did our other errors and then I'll copy this uh, end if section here and paste that in and now we want to loop through and print out those errors if there are any so I'm going to grab this uh, for loop here since this is similar to what we're going to be printing out so I will paste that in and correct that indentation now instead this isn't for our email this is for our picture so we'll say form dot picture dot errors so for error in form.picture.errors, then we want to print uh, this error here. And we're also going to want to uh, put in a break after that span so that we can get some spacing between those. And also let's do a class here of text-danger. That'll just make sure that those 
uh, errors are outlined in red text. Now we didn't have to do that in our other forms because they were wrapped in this invalid uh, feedback div, but this is a different kind of field. This is a file field. So we had to do this a little bit differently. Okay, and one thing that I forget to do sometimes that always throws me off is to add a special encoding type to our form. And we have to do this in order for our form to pass our image data properly. So at the top of the form here in the HTML, where we have the method uh, of post and the action, we need to also add an encoding type. So I'll say ENC type is equal to, and within double quotes there, this is going to be multi-part forward slash form dash data. So again, be sure that you get that because sometimes I forget to put that in and the errors that you get aren't entirely obvious if you forget to put that in. And it's something that's tripped me up in the past. Okay, so now let's see if we got everything right now so far. So let's pull up our site in the browser. So it looks like our web server is still running, so that's good. And now I will reload our account page. And we can see at the bottom here that we have an input to choose a new profile picture. Now, we don't have the logic in place to save this image yet, but our validation should already work if we try to upload something that isn't a JPEG or PNG. So let me try to upload a text file or something like that. So I think I have a text file on my desktop. So on my desktop here, I'm gonna to try to upload test.txt. So let's open that. So when I choose that, you can see that it gives us the name of the file that it's going to upload there. So now if we submit this, then we got an error back here and it said file does not have an approved extension and then gives the extensions here, JPEG and PNG. Now, like I've said a couple of times now, uh, if you get to this point and your form doesn't seem like it's doing anything, then definitely ch uh, double check that you have that encoding type set in the HTML because I forgot that before and it's not really obvious where the problem is. And also it's not really mentioned much in the Flask documentation. So it took me a while to find out uh, whenever I ran into that. Okay, so now let's add the logic to our route to actually save this profile picture for our user. So if we go to our route, so I'll open up my project here and go to the routes.py file. Then within our validate on submit conditional, let's add another conditional to the top of this to see if there is any picture data uh, because that's not a required field. So we're gonna have to make this check. So we can say if form, dot picture dot data then we want to do something with that picture data and now within this conditional i want to set the user's profile picture now the code to set the user's profile picture is logically its own little section of code so it would be nice just to turn this into a different function so i'm going to create a new function above our account route here and i'll just call this uh, save underscore picture and we'll take the picture data as an argument here. So I'll accept an argument that is form a picture and save that. And now inside of that save picture function, we'll put the logic for saving the user's uploaded image to our file system. So first, we don't really want to keep the name of the file that they uploaded because it might collide with the name of an image that's already in our folder. So it would be nice to just randomize the name of this image with something like a random hex. So one module that I like to use to create a random hex is one that we saw earlier in the series when we created our secret key, and that is the secrets module. So I'm gonna to go to the top here and import the secrets module. So I'll say import secrets, and then go back down to our save picture function. And now within the save picture function, I'll create a random hex that will be the base of our file name. So I'll say, uh, I'll call this random underscore hex and set this equal to uh, secrets dot token underscore hex. And we'll pass in uh, eight bytes there. And now we also wanna be sure that we're saving this file with the same extension as it was uploaded. So if they uploaded a PNG, then it'll be a PNG. And if it's a JPEG, then it'll be a JPEG. And in order to grab the file extension from the file that they uploaded, we can use the OS module. So I'm going to import that as well. So at the top here, I will import OS. Now back down in our save uh, picture function. 
And now we can use the os.path.splitext function to get this extension. And that function returns two values. It returns the file name without the extension, and then it returns the extension itself. So to grab both of those values, we can say f name and comma f ext is equal to os.path dot split ext and then we want to pass in the file name of the picture that they uploaded so we'll say uh, form picture dot file name now this form picture here is going to be the data from the field that the user submits and if it's a file then it does have this file name attribute there so we can use that now <clears throat> we're actually not going to use this f name variable at all we're only going to use the extension now one common thing that people do within python when they just want to throw away a variable name is to use an underscore so let's do that now if you don't use an underscore then whatever your editor you're using it might gripe about you having a, a variable that is unused in your application Okay, so now let's combine the random hex with the file extension in order to get the file name of the image that we're going to save. So to do this, I'll just create a new variable here called picture underscore fn for a file name. And I will set this equal to the random hex plus the file extension. So it'll just concatenate both of those together. And now we need to get the full path to where this image will be saved so that Python knows where we're saving this. And to do this, we're going to use an attribute that we haven't seen yet. And that is the root path attribute of our app. And that will give the root path of our application all the way up to our package directory. So if we want to save this image into our profile pics within our static folder, then we can create a variable here called picture path and we will do an os.path.join and we will join the app.rootpath uh, and we will join that with static forward slash profile underscore picks and then we will also join that with the picture file name variable that we just created and we're actually going to use that variable so those can't be within strings okay so let's look at this full line again so we have picture path equal to os.path.join we are joining that with the app.rootpath which is going to give us the full path all the way up to our package directory and we're going to join that with uh, our static folder uh, and profile pics within the static folder and then join that with our picture file name and using that os.path.join will make sure that all of that gets concatenated correctly into one long path. Now, if you're not very familiar with what the OS module can do, then I do have a separate video on that that goes into more detail about that module if anyone is interested. Okay, and then we can actually save that image uh, by using this form picture uh, variable again. And we can say form picture dot save. And now where we want to save this so we can save this at the picture path that we just created. So now at this point, we've actually saved that picture to the file system, but the user's image in the database is still set to the default image. So we need to update that. But since everything in this function is just about saving our image so far, let's not put that logic in here. Um, instead, let's just return the picture's file name that we created so that the user can use that value outside of this function. So now I'll just return this uh, picture file name. So return picture underscore fn. And now uh, back in the conditional that we were writing before we created that function, now we can use that function that we just created to save our picture and give us back the file name. So we can say picture underscore file is equal to save picture and that's the function that we just created and now we can pass in that form data so form dot picture dot data and i will go ahead and save that and now we can set the current user's image to that picture file just like we did with the username and email so i'll copy that line and paste that in here and now we're going to set the current user dot picture oh and actually i forgot that's not picture that is um, let's see, current user image file is what we called that in our models. So we need to set the current user 
dot image file. And we want to set that equal to the picture file that was returned from that save picture function. So I'll paste that in there. Okay, so now let's save everything and test this out because that was a lot that we just changed. So we want to make sure that nothing is broken. So let's open up our terminal and we'll probably have to restart our uh, server here and we do. So I will run our server and then open up our website. And now I am here in my account page. So I'm going to try to update my profile picture. So I'm going to actually use a real image here. So I will uh, set this equal to this avatar.png on my desktop. So I'll open that. And now we can see that we're going to update our profile picture to avatar.png. So I will update that. And we can see that that seemed to work. It uh, put our new picture here in our account page. Okay, so that is great that that works so far. Um, and also let me reload the page here to make sure that that is uh, still there. Okay, and it is. Um, now there's one more thing that I wanna do here before we end this video. I wanna show you how you can automatically resize images when you upload them. So right now we're just accepting any image that the user uploads, but the largest image on our site right now is just set in CSS to 125 pixels. So there would be no use in having a 4,000 pixel image uh, that just gets scaled down to 125 pixels. Uh, it takes up a lot of space on the file system and will also cause your website to run slow because it has to send that large image to the browser every time. Uh, so for example, I have a large image of my dog as a puppy on my desktop. And if I upload that as my profile picture, then I'll choose file here. And we can see that this is large.jpg. So I will open that. And now I'll update this as my profile picture. And we can see that that worked. Now this new image that we uploaded actually looks small, but that's just scaled down in CSS. If I actually right click on this and go to open image in new tab, and then look at this image in the new tab, then we can see that this image is actually pretty large. So let's resize these large images before they actually get saved to the file system. And to do this, I'm gonna be using a package called Pillow. And I have a separate video on this package that some of you may have seen before where I go into a little more uh, in depth how to work with pictures. But in this video, we'll just be using this to simply resize the image to 125 pixels. So first we need to install that package and we can do that with pip. So I will open back up my command line here and shut down our web server and clear this page. And we can do this with a pip install. And this is pillow with a capital P there. So pip install pillow. And once that is installed, we can import that into our routes. So I will bring back up our application here and go to the top of our page. And right below our secrets here, I'll say from PIL, and this was installed when we uh, installed that pillow package, then we can say import. We wanna import the image uh, class from that library. So now let's go back to our save picture function down here towards the bottom right here. And now within this function, we wanna resize this image before we save it. So right above our uh, picture.save, we can resize this. So to do this, I can set an output underscore size, and I'll set this to a tuple of the size that we want. And I'm just gonna set this to 125, 125. And then we can create a new image. So I'll say I is equal to image dot open and we want to open the image that we uh, passed in to the function so form dot picture and now we want to resize this so we'll say image dot thumbnail and we'll set that equal to the output size and now we can save this image instead of saving the uh, form picture that we passed in. So instead of doing form picture dot save, we're going to do I dot save because I is the new image that we created from that form picture. So like I said, that is a pretty simple example of an image resizing. And if you'd like to see more of what you can do with uh, images, then you can check out the video I did on that pillow package. But now we should be able to save this and see that our large picture now gets resized on our file system. So I saved everything there. Now let's rerun our server. So I will do a Python run.py and open our website again, close down that 
old image. And now uh, for the update profile picture, I'll just update that with that large .jpg image again. So now let's submit this form and it should uh, resubmit that picture again, but this time it should be resized. So now if I right click on this and go to open image in new tab and look at this image, then we can see it's no longer that very large image that we had before. This is scaled down to 125 by 125 pixels. And doing that is gonna save a ton of space on our file system and also speed up our website. And we can view these images within our file system. So if I was to go back to our static directory here that I had opened up before, if we go into that profile pics directory within our static folder, then we can see that we have these images that we uploaded to our site. Now we have two here that are of my dog and one of these should be large and one of them should be small. So I'll preview both of these. We can see that that is a large one. And if I go over, we can see that that is just a small one. So I'll close those out. And if I was to check the size of these images, so I'm, on this one, I'll go right click and go on get info. And it looks like this one here is 2.7 megabytes. And if I do a get info on this one, this one is eight kilobytes. So the difference is huge. And lastly, you can see that the images that we uploaded here do have a random hex token as the file name for the image and the correct uh, extension. So these are JPEGs and this one here is a PNG. And we can also see that our older profile pictures are still here uh, that aren't active anymore. And if you'd like, you could also write some additional code to clean those up and delete those when a user successfully changes their profile picture. But I'm just gonna leave those there for the time being uh, since they're not taking up that much space. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for this video. Uh, we now have a way for a user to update their profile information and can also update their profile pictures. And in the next video, we'll create a page where different users can create posts that get added to the homepage. And we'll also show how to update and delete those posts from within the website. So if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.